the room cannot be an entire restoration. John Ruskin, Victorian art critic, famously said that it is as impossible to restore the past as it is to resurrect the dead. And he, he's right, of course, it's a compromise. The room will, in 20, 30 years' time, be seen very much as a period piece, just as the 1938 restoration is to us, very much of its period in the 1930s. That The 1896 restoration by J.D. Crace is very much of its period. Our restoration will, by future generations, also be seen as very much characteristic of the 2000s. It's a compromise, a compromise with the past, a compromise with the present. We've had to re retain, for instance, the frames that were made by Charles Bielefeld in the 1850s during the municipal restoration because the original frames were removed in 1847 and are today at Buckingham Palace are used to frame mirrors and pictures. The original parts are the crestings which were made by Fricker and Henderson in 1823 and are incomparably splendid. We did consider uh, replacing these uh, with a facsimile of the original frame, which was very interesting because it had a lattice motif and you could actually see the silk underneath it. But we decided to keep the Bielefeld papier-mâché, firstly because it's quite interesting historically. Bielefeld is a well-known manufacturer. They're quite attractive and quite interesting of their kind, and they're also now part of the history of the room itself. The, the apse ceilings, which are the two little half ceilings at either end of the room, as I say, the decoration was discovered. But in the case of the main dome ceiling of the main rotunda of the room. That is a slightly more complicated story. The present appearance of it is of a painted sky with a large star motif in the centre acting as the rose from the central chandelier. But we know that Robert Jones's decoration had dragons painted on the ceiling and light radiating from them across a painted sky full of Chinese mythological figures. Jones's description for the ceiling decoration was uh, that it was symbolical of light, as he put it. And I think that idea of light in the room is very significant, not only through the motif of the sunflower, but also through the use of reflective metal leaf finishes of different textures. In some places it's a matte sanded texture in other places highly burnished and uh, the the use of light making uh, taking advantage of the curved walls of the luster of the silk and so forth is something that underpins the whole scheme I think unfortunately the Jones dragons disappeared um, probably around about 1864 during a Victorian phase of restoration I say unfortunately, there was restoration of very good quality, but it did mean the Jones sky disappeared. And we only have some rather indistinct drawings to show what it looked like. But some years ago, when we were cleaning the ceiling as part of the restoration program, one could see the little tack marks or pin marks on the ceiling, which followed the serpentine lines of the stakes and the dragons, which had been on the ceiling. They'd actually been pinned up painted on very thin linen canvas so one could trace out the shape of this design, the original Jones design, but unfortunately the paintings themselves had gone so it would have been really, it was felt a step too far to recreate out of one's imagination this conjectural ceiling decoration. So it was decided to leave the ceiling as it was in its 1864 form. The great missing element in the room is this sensational chimney piece with Ormolu by Samuel Parker, which must have been one of the most splendid ever made in this country. It was removed in 1847 and is currently at Buckingham Palace. And it picked up so many motifs in the saloon, like the sunflower motif, which occurs over and over again, symbolic of light and the sun god Apollo. Um, one day we might replicate it, but what we've done is um, had a photograph made, printed onto canvas, so that it gives visitors some idea of the splendour of the original.
chimney piece. Other elements in the room that aren't quite right are the architraves around the doors. Those all are also largely papier-mâché and largely made by Bielefeld. Those were all removed in the clearances. The dado is the original one. It was returned by Queen Mary in the 1930s, and that has been put back. But interestingly, underneath it, there's a J.D. Crace dado from 1896, which is quite interesting because it's sort of based on the Robert Jones one. Also missing is the chandelier made by Perry and Company, um, 1817, 1818, which was for many years thought to have been lost. But we now know, in fact, it's in the Crimson Drawing Room at Windsor Castle. Uh, the chandeliers in the saloon at the moment um, are made up from old chandeliers and were sort of put together in the 1920s. Uh, they're fine, but they're not the original chandelier, which still survives and is at Windsor Castle. So it is a whole series of compromises because, as I said earlier, it is impossible really to completely restore a room that has had so many changes in its lifetime.